The Million Dollar Highway is a beautiful stretch of highway on US 550 between Uray and Silverton in southwestern Colorado, and everyone should experience it at some point in their life just from a passenger vehicle. We highly suggest not to take your recreational vehicle along this stretch. We're going to show you in this video why we feel that way. You can see right here, no guardrail, no shoulder, extremely steep, steep drop. So this is southwestern Colorado and the stretch that we are talking about is Highway 550. You can see Durango's down here, Montrose is up this way. When we do take 550 south, we usually just stop here and stay at Ridgeway State Park. Great state park, we have a whole review on it that you can search for. That's a great place to stay and then we just take our Jeep and do this um, trek around here. The other option is there's a lot of nice options for RV parks in Durango. So you can stay here and then take your other vehicle and view this area, but we do not recommend taking your RV along this area. You'll see some in this video. Doesn't mean you can't do it. There's truckers that even take this route, but um, I personally don't recommend it. We are, are um, Colorado natives and we travel a lot in here. We do a lot of the mountain passes. We've done a lot of mountain passes throughout the whole US. And we just feel that this stretch is just too dangerous to us and the other people around us to take this. So when we do want to head from kind of the Montrose area and we're heading down this way, we come along here from 62 and then we take 145 down and around. We really love Telluride, so we spend a lot of time in this area. There's Priest Gulch RV Park down around this stretch. And then there's a um, Caton Campground, which is just kind of one of the uh, National Forest BLM sites you can get through recreation.gov and that's further up here and they do have some electrical up here so we stay there when we're trying to visit Telluride. Telluride doesn't have any RV parks. So this stretch is not bad. You hit one pass, this Lizard Head Pass, but it's a pretty calm ascent and then descent so it's not anything super steep like you get over here with Colbank Pass, Mollus Pass, and then of course Red Mountain Pass which is the really scary one. So we'll show on the video, we're going to show the stretch. Um, let's see, we come in over here by Ofer. So we were doing Ofer in the Jeep. So we come in around uh, um, just north of Silverton in about this stretch and you'll see us heading northbound. Northbound's a little bit easier because you are along the mountainside. You're not along the big drop. This is pretty much a big drop for most of this route. Um, so northbound is a little less scary but it's still very tight. Red Mountain Pass is over 11,000 feet in elevation. And then you climb back down and it really doesn't get nice and smooth until this little stretch right before you race. So you'll see that in the video and I'll talk a little bit through the video. The Million Dollar Highway isn't exactly one of the most dangerous roads in America. Of course, that goes to the interstates. They have the most fatalities because they have the most traffic. The issue really is that when there is an accident, often it's not going to go well. You can see in this picture, this actually was last summer, this RV went over the edge. It's pretty easy. You don't have any guardrails. You don't have a shoulder. They were okay. I wouldn't be showing this picture if they were not okay, but obviously the RV is totaled and this happened to be a little bit more shallow spot. And so they probably didn't roll except the one time. So you're seeing here what 550 looks like for the most part. You can see we just are on this little two lane highway. We do have a dotted line between, so you are able to pass. And in a lot of places you do have kind of a straight flat area like this and you are able to pass or people can pass you if you're the one in the RV going a little bit slower. I think the speed limit where we're at right here is probably about 35, 40 miles per hour. Hopefully we see one here pretty soon. Of course, once we start going through the pass and we go start going through kind of switchbacks and, and curving around, then that's gonna drop down to probably 20, uh, 35 and even 25 miles per hour. There happened to be some road work going on too and they were cutting down trees for some reason. Um, so the helicopter just flew away and now we are on our way and heading up. You can see we also have shoulder. It's nice and flat to the sides. Certainly wouldn't worry about anything right at this point in time. Now we're about to hit mile marker 87 and this is the point where the gates come down. So they do have gates north of Purgatory Resort by Durango. 
and they will shut it down because Colbank Pass and Molas Pass are also over 10,000 feet. They're pretty steep. If the winter conditions are pretty bad, they might have to close that. And I guess they actually do fairly frequently close that in the winter. I'm sure you're not even considering doing this in the winter unless you live down here and absolutely need to. Um, and certainly not with your RV, but they, um, they do have to close it occasionally. This stretch from Silverton to Uray closes also, um, not only for winter conditions and heavy snow, but also for accidents and things that are going on. The Million Dollar Highway is part of a stretch of highway called the San Juan Skyway. And so this is one of the scenic byway um, designated scenic highways for the U.S. And it really goes throughout the San Juan Mountain Range, which is what we're in right now. And on the map that I showed you, it's pretty much that stretch as you're heading south um, of Uray, kind of Ridgeway area, and you take 550 down. Then you take 160, which heads west over to Cortez, and then come back up on that 145, which I showed you, that goes up by Telluride, and then take 62 over back to Ridgeway. So it's pretty much a big loop, a big circle that goes around, and it's a beautiful stretch of road that you can do in your passenger vehicle. But like I said, at least for this little stretch on this 550 stretch for a million dollar highway, we would not recommend taking your RV. Um, you can see we have a trailer in front of us a little bit, but he's going pretty slow and um, he's also heading northbound, a little less scary heading on the northbound. The Sky One Skyway is a 233 mile loop if you did it in total. If you're just driving this in your passenger vehicle, it takes probably about 40 minutes to head from Uray down to Silverton. So we'll kind of do that stretch and visit that area with our Jeep. We actually like to do a lot of Jeep trails in this area. This is a great Mecca for those who want to do some intense Jeeping. Um, and I'm talking about modified Jeeping and stuff, not just uh, your regular Jeeps, but there's some great uh, off road four by four trails that are fun to do. You can see there's a chain um, setup area that was just off there to the right so you you can pull over and put on chains in Colorado we do have chain laws in effect and so that is from let's see I think it's September 1st and it goes till May 31st I know it goes to the end of the May um, and you have to either have four by four on your vehicle and then snow tires or kind of mud traction tires so heavy heavy duty tires which is fine on your passenger vehicles for those of us with rvs we're generally not going to have that in our motorhome setup so we have to carry either chains or auto socks and we actually prefer the auto socks because they don't damage up your wheel wells like chains will do so and they they're really compact and they don't take up a lot of space and they're not really heavy so we keep those in our under storage area if we need it you can see now look at the look at the other side of the road okay did you see that so there is the white line that is supposed to indicate your eight foot marker for the side of the road and it's not even there because not only is there no shoulder there's no guardrails because they can't have guardrails up here they have to be able to clear the snow but the road is eroded away where you don't even have the white line so think about how wide your rv is how maybe you're you're pulling behind you a toad or a trailer and so you know how it goes when you're kind of doing those curves and you're moving along something you just kind of head over those white lines or you head over the yellow line maybe just a little bit forget about that here that is just going to pull you right off the mountain the other thing to know and we don't see any in this video but the last time we took this heading southbound we had cyclists on the road which i can't even believe i mean talk about a death sentence so cyclists people on bicycles were heading down this road and so trying to get around somebody on a on a cycle on a bicycle i forget about it you have to go into the other lane of traffic to give them proper clearance to make it safe for them and and there's so much traffic on this road that i mean that's so difficult to try to do that so there you go you can see there's some people taking their rvs i'm not saying you can't do it i'm just saying we don't choose to do it and we do a lot of mountain passes and a lot of mountain driving and we just we don't feel like it's safe it's just too much stress there's other options you can stay north in uray you can stay south in durango 
enjoy the views with your other vehicle, but you do not need to take your RV through this. It's just so much extra stress and I don't wanna see you end up being one of those pictures of RVs that have rolled down the side of the mountain. The other thing that's a little bit stressful is part of the rock out, um, juts out, part of this granite, when it's been cut away, it kind of juts forward and it seems like it's awfully close. It must not be because obviously we see other truckers and stuff going through, but it sure feels pretty tight when, when you're in a tall vehicle. There's also two tunnels to, to think about. The lowest of those tunnels has a height clearance of 13 feet, seven inches. So that's probably going to be fine for most of us RVers and stuff, but just so you know that there are those two tunnels that you need to go through. So let's talk a little bit about the development of this road. So the original road was developed in 1880. So back in those days, that's really when the mines were going really heavy here in Colorado. And so we have silver and gold and all sorts of other um, uh, minerals and things that they were mining down in this area. And so they needed a way to bring that to other towns and the railroads. So they developed the road in 1880. And then in 1920, that's the point when they expanded the road and they paved the highway. And so there's some rumor that that cost a million dollars, which would have been a lot of money in 1920. And that's how it got the name Million Dollar Highway. Other people say that it's because you have million dollar views the whole way through, which I would agree. Other people have said that um, somebody once joked, you'd have to pay me a million dollars to do that road or to do that drive again. And nobody really knows what the reason is for the name, according to the Durango Herald, which is probably your best source at getting the real information about how it got its name. So nobody really knows how it, how it initially got the name Million Dollar Highway, but the name has stuck. And it's really referring to just this 12 mile, mile stretch that goes between Uray and Silverton. So there's a lot of beautiful stretch for that whole San Juan Skyway, that 233 miles. But the stretch that's really the most dangerous is this little 12 mile stretch of the Million Dollar Highway. You can see as we're wrapping around the mountain here, we are on a 25 mile per hour speed limit. And so going nice and slow definitely would help. I don't think there's anything wrong with taking this road in a passenger vehicle. I know some people want to avoid it completely and I, I certainly wouldn't do that. It's, it's, if you're going the speed limit, it's a very doable stretch, but look over there on the other side. I would not want to be on that with our 38 foot motorhome and then towing and ending up being 60 plus feet in length in total and trying to make sure that all 60 feet of that whole stretch is is within the small amount of road space so no thank you i see this guy's doing it a couple people do it it can be done wow he was a triple toe um but i just i, I think you're playing with fire a little bit So as I mentioned, you're not seeing a lot of guardrails, hardly any guardrails throughout the whole stretch. And part of that is that there's just not enough road to stick a guardrail on the side because it literally drops right off and down into the valley below. But the other real reason is because they have to be able to do snow removal. So the snow plows are coming through here. They're trying to keep it open for most of the winter as much as they can. And in doing that, they need to be able to push the snow over the edge. When they can, they've tried to put in some pull-offs where you can enjoy the views and see some things. They'll have some informational signs there to tell you about the mountain peaks or the avalanche um, danger and kind of the views of avalanche damage and stuff like that. I think that's actually what they're looking at there. I'll try to put a picture of that on the end coming from the other side to see what that looks like. You can also have rock slides in this area, so it's important to know about that. We're now about to approach the smaller of the two tunnels, and this is really as we're kind of hitting our last little bit as we're heading into your ray. As a reminder, the height is 13.7 here.
And just another note about RV camping. So because I recommend not actually driving this with your RV, you want to know where you need to camp. There's some great options in Durango. There's a number of RV parks in Durango. I think about five. And then Haviland Lake is also there. It's actually drained right now, but um, that's a good place to camp and stay. So there's a bunch of options in Durango. I'll link to places below in the notes. If you are up on the Uray side, we actually like to stay at Ridgeway State Park. You have a little bit more space. It's very beautiful there. You're on the lake and you can do a lot of recreation with that. So I'll link to that one. We have a review on that one. We also have a review for Priest Gulch RV Resort, which is on 145. We stay there often when we're going to Telluride. And then um, any others, oh, Kate Campground, if I don't have a review on that, I'll be doing one soon because we're going to be staying there again pretty soon. So I'll link to those in the notes so that you have those options and you can see what those RV parks look like. If you're new to our channel, I just wanted to let you know that we have a bunch of different videos about RV driving um, well, throughout the U.S., but heavily with Colorado since we live here, and we're actually driving in our 38-foot motorhome for most of those videos. So we have, let's see, on U.S. 50, we have Monarch Pass for 70. We have um, Eisenhower Pass, both going, or Eisenhower Tunnel, I should say, going both westbound and eastbound because they're very different experiences. We have Vail Pass. Um, over on 285, we have Kenosha and Red Hill. And then for the stretch between Fair Play and Breck on Highway 9, we have um, Kenosha Pass. So a number of different passes where if you are traveling in Colorado with your RV, you might want to see what that pass is going to look like before you have to take it. So be sure to check our channel. We actually have a whole playlist on RV driving. We are almost to the end here and we're about to do this hairpin turn as you're heading up here to the left hand side there is a pull out and there's a really great sign that says Uray, um, little Switzerland of America or something like that um, and you can stop and you're looking over at the town of Uray which is down below in the valley so we are pretty much in the final stretch here On our YouTube channel, we also do a lot to show different campgrounds that we stay at. So we'll do different reviews for the campgrounds and RV parks. And then we also go to a lot of the national parks. So we have different full planning videos about traveling to the national parks. We even take out a map and we show you the route that you can drive with your RV, what isn't safe to drive with your RV, places that you can stay, things like that that you would need to know. So be sure to check it out. You can subscribe for that. And then you can also find us on Instagram and Facebook facebook at rv homeschool and follow us there for more um, kind of up-to-date information and so we're about to dip into your ray here you can see we're starting to get houses and stuff on the side one of the things that makes your ray so great is that they have hot springs here there's a lot of hot springs in this general southwest colorado area but the your hot springs are really fun and they've renovated them in recent years so they've almost kind of turned it into a bit of a water park uh, you can see part of the city there off to the right there's a lot of different historic items to see, a lot of great restaurants and breweries. And then of course the jeeping is phenomenal in this area. You could even do a Jeep tour so you don't have to bring your own or know how to do that extensive jeeping. You can hire somebody else to do that part for you and just enjoy the views. There's also white river rafting down here. You can go on different tours to do that. You can do different kayaking, obviously cycling, maybe not on this particular stretch of road, but there's plenty of road space where you can bike and enjoy that as well. And of course, hiking, just general hiking and enjoying the town. Plenty of waterfalls, really cool stuff to see. The San Juans, I think are probably the prettiest mountain range in the US. I'm gonna go so far as to say even more so than Glacier. I just love the San Juans and the red rock of the mountain along the edges and just the views. It's really a beautiful area. Mm -hmm. 
So here we are heading into town at this point in time. And actually with the traffic, we're probably gonna slow down even more. It does get a little bit busy around here. If you liked this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you have any questions, feel free to comment below and I try to make sure to answer all of those. Um, you can also disagree and tell me how you've driven this a million times and that's fine. I'm just trying to look out for most people, especially people coming from the east who maybe aren't as used to mountain passes. I just don't want anybody getting into an unsafe situation. So hopefully this was useful to you. You can follow us for more content and thank you so much for watching.